Hello there, in this video I'm going to be talking about breathing mechanics and particularly about an aspect of that which I find to be dysfunctional in a great number of clients with whom I work. And then I'm going to show you an exercise how to address that particular aspect of the dysfunctional breathing. Now most people are pretty aware of what constitutes a breath. We've got inhalation, exhalation. Most people will also be mainly aware that the diaphragm is the prime driver of that inhalation. The muscle sits at the base of the ribcage. When it contracts and flattens and pulls down, that draws air into the lungs. That's typically seen with an inflation of the abdomen and that's a perfectly natural part of breathing. The next aspect is what's happening with the sternum, the chest bone. That's said to have a pump handle movement and it kind of pitches up and out from the base so that as you breathe in and take a big breath, it's almost like that pump handle that is being moved forwards and backwards. The last part and the most important part with regards to this video is what's known as a bucket handle movement. This is where the ribs are said to move like a bucket handle because they should pivot and rotate and flip out to the side as you breathe in. And that bilateral bucket handle movement through all of those ribs increases the width ways expansion and thereby drives more air into the lungs, draws more air into the lungs. That bucket handle movement is the one I find to be mostly dysfunctional in a lot of people that I work with. And it relies on mobility in the sternocostal joints and the costovertebral joints around the back. And because the ribs all attach onto the thoracic spine, that's the definition of the thoracic spine, where those 12 ribs attach, there is very typically dysfunction in that. Modern human life, curved, rounded, forwards, all sorts of mechanical dysfunction that's there. And the reason this is important is one, because if the bucket handle movement and the width weight expansion is not optimal, you're never going to have uh, ideal breathing mechanics. But particularly when it comes to core strengthening exercises and mat work exercises or things to focus on the deep abdominal canister, if your primary method of taking breath in relies on inflating the abdomen just with that diaphragmatic movement because you're so locked up and stiff through the thoracic spine and you have to do that as your main way of breathing, then the very things you're trying to retrain and focus in on for baseline core strength and background core stability and lumbar pelvic conditioning, you're moving at the same time as breathing. And if you, you don't have that compliance in your rib cage to take air in and out, you can see how the two things almost cancel each other out. So it's important to try and you know, re-oil these joints and get that expansion in the rib cage and help these natural breathing mechanics. And that's where the exercise comes in. You're going to need a resistance band for this one. And it's a lovely bit of proprioceptive feedback, tactile feedback that's generated here. You bring the band up underneath the armpits and then tie it around the chest wherever it's comfortable. And you want it to be relatively tight. Now you can either tie it in a knot or a bow, or as I'm going to do here, you can just go across and then pinch and hold. And I can feel at this point, like a, I'm almost like a barrel that's got a tight strap around it. I can feel that band compressing me from all angles. And now when I take my breath in, that's my focus point. As you breathe in, you're trying to push out in all directions against that resistance band. Now as you do this, sit up tall. And to start with, you can take some big breaths in. Now you don't want to take excessive numbers of big breaths in because you'll probably get lightheaded quite quickly. But once you've got those big breaths in and you're really feeling that pushing out against the band in all directions, then just bring your breath volume down a little bit. And if you're feeling like it's not doing much, you may need to tighten the band a little bit more. So you're really getting the impetus as to where you want those ribs, getting that bucket handle movement. Now the position of the band can be lowered, whatever's comfortable, as long as it's not getting in the way of anything. But here, you can really hopefully get a sense for the abdominal canister remaining still while you're generating that width ways expansion. And it just sometimes gives that input, gives that stimulus as to where you want your chest to move to facilitate the correct pattern. This is in place of somebody, you know, I would often do this in an assessment, place my hands on the side of the ribcage and get them to push out against my hands. And as a, you find a lot of the time in this sort of muscle stimulation scenario, if you actually give the body something to feel and press against, it suddenly gets the picture and you find there's actually movement there, but it may be just not 
automatic. So using the band technique around the ribcage is a really great way to improve that width weight expansion and thereby improve the mechanics overall of breathing. That's a really good technique to do in combination with some of the beginner or early mat work lumbar pelvic stability exercises like the one leg stretch, the scissors, the deep abdominal activations because if you can work on engaging through those deep abdominal canister muscles, the lumbar pelvic stabilizers while simultaneously doing a width weight expansion then you're fostering this pattern of dissociation of movement and therefore helping the body on the right path to that functional breathing pattern while simultaneously maintaining that course of strength. So I really like this technique. Yes, it's a gentle one. It's not meant to in any way get you out of puff, um, but it just gives that tactile stimulus to help you try and strive towards that bucket handle movement and that width weight expansion in the chest.